Yuma Daf Tes, today's email comes from Rabbi Pesach Greenberg. And he writes, I've been using all Daf since Brochus, and the reason I'm writing to you is to give you some Nachas regarding your Harbatas Torah. I live in San Jose, Costa Rica. And he puts in parentheses, not California, Puerto Rico. And Baruch Hashem, since retiring in 2008, worked daily on my spiritual pension. The time spent daily learning with you is the highlight of my day. Drop the pebble into the pond. One never knows how far and wide the ripples spread. Encountering your multimedia production of the daf is addicting and very gishmak. Thank you for your devotion and time spent preparing for us, your students in Hebra. I look forward besides Shemayat, to meeting you one day as your energy and enthusiasm resonates with my neshama. Kol Tov, Rabbi Pesach Greenberg, Costa Rica, originally Baltimore. Wow, Shkoyach, Rabbi Greenberg. So yesterday we were discussing Lishka's Parhedrin. And since we mentioned Parhedrin, so the Gemara goes off a little bit into Trumas and Maestris and ends up with Parhedrin. If a baker buys produce from an Amaret, what does he have to be mafresh in terms of Trumas and Maestris? He doesn't have to be mafresh Truma Gdoyla, the 2% approximately, because even Amaret will be mafresh before he sells it. It's not that large of an amount, and he's concerned that it's a Chi of Misa. Amaret is makbar on that. The next 10% that one is typically mafresh, Maestris region that goes to a Levi, that this baker has to separate and put aside, and so too he has to separate the 10%, the Meiser Ani, that goes on year 3 and 6, six to the Ani. Separate it, but you could use it. Why? Because it's possible that Ma'aris already separated it, and let the Ani, or let the lady come, and prove that it says, Hamoitzi Mechaber Olaverai. However, Meiser Shani, the 10% that goes to oneself, bring it up to Yerushalayim, that the baker doesn't have to bring. Why? Because the parhedron, these appointees, everyone wanted to show off and show that he institutes new rules and regulations. And therefore, they were very tough with the bakers. And they reduced the price and the profit that the bakers would make. So therefore, Chachamim said, we don't have to make another xera on the bakers. And we don't require them to be mafers, my, my shame. The Gemara goes in, the Gemara says, it says in the Pasuk, Girish Hashem, Toysev Yamim, one that has Yerushamayim, will add years. The Gemara darshins it for the Beis HaMikdash, the Bayis Rishon that lasted for 410 years. There were only eight in Kohanim, look in Taisvas. And the Bayis Sheni is referred to in the Pasuk, Shenois Rishayim Tikaitzrena. The Rishayim, the years of the Rishayim will be less. The Bayis Sheni actually lasted for more years, it was 420 years. But the Gemara darshins that out of the 420 years, in 279 years, there was 300 kaihanim. That means that they lived a very short life. Each one lived less than a year. The Cheshman is, the first 40 years, Shimon at Tzadik was the Kohen Gadol. The next 80 years was Yochanan, Kohen Gadol. And then you have 10 years of Yishmael ben Pavi and 11 years of Rebbe Leezer ben Charsek. That leaves us with 279 for 300 kaihanim. That's less than a year per kai. Rebbe Yochanan Pesarta, who became a ger because of his cow, a beautiful story. He says that the reason why Shilai, where there was the Mishkan for 369 years, it was Nechrab, is because they were Mevaza the Kachim. And they also did Gilei Arais. What does that mean? The Kohanim would eat the Kachim before they put the Matanais on the Mizbeach. They wanted to eat before HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so to speak, and therefore there was Bezayim Kachim. One Mandoma holds they were literally over and Gila Rais, B'nai Eli. And the other Mandoma says, whoever said the B'nai Eli sinned, is Taya, he made a mistake. They didn't literally, they weren't literally Mizana, but what happened was when the women, the Yaldais, would come to bring their birds, instead of being macro right away, they postponed it, and the women couldn't go home to their husbands, and they had to wait overnight, and therefore they mavatal them from Puru Ravu, and it's as if they were Chaita. The first Beis Hamikdash was Nechrav because of the Gimel Chamurais, Avedi Zara, Shvichas Damim, and Gilei Arayas. The Gemara tells us the Gilei Arayas, the married women, would bring attention to themselves. They would walk with shorter women, so they looked taller. They would walk with their heads up in the air, and therefore they had to walk with very short steps. They would put perfume in their shoes, and when they went next to Bachurei Yisrael, they would spray them with the perfume. The Gemara tells us that they were Rishayim. They had Bittachai that Hashem is not going to do anything to them. And Hashem showed them He will punish them. And in fact, He punished them. He gave them Midah Kanek Midah, three punishments that 
Yerushalayim, the Harabayas, was desolate. They get the three Averis that they did. Bayesheni, everybody was Isaac Batayra, Gilz Chasodim, in Mitzvahs. Yet, the reason why the Bayesheni was Nechrav is because they had Sinas Chinam, baseless hatred. But we see that in Bayes Rishon, there's also the concept of baseless hatred, Sinas Chinam. It says that people would eat and drink together, and afterwards they would stab each other in the back with their, with their mouth. The Gemara says that was only the politicians, but the Hamoinam didn't do so. Rabbi Yochanan Rabbi Leza says that in the first base Hamikdash, they weren't ashamed to show their Averis, HaKosh Baruch Hu, show them when the end is going to be, and he rebuilt the base Hamikdash. But in the second bias, the people were more afraid of their friends than HaKosh Baruch Hu, and they didn't show their Averis. So HaKosh Baruch Hu didn't tell them when the end is going to be. Rabbi Yochanan says that the people that lived in the first base, base Hamikdash, they're like, even the nails, which doesn't amount to much, people just cut their nails off, is worth more than the stomachs, so to speak, of people from Bayis Sheni. The Vilna Gain says, he understands what a Tana is, but he has no idea what it meant to be a simple Jew living in Bayis Rishet. Rishlag says the opposite. The people from Bayis Sheni were more chashav. They were learning Torah even though they were oppressed by the Goyim. The Gemara tells us that Rishlakish was swimming in the Jordan, and the Gemara wanted to say that Rabbi Rebbe grabbed him but, and spoke to him, but the Gemara says it's impossible. Rosh Lakish wouldn't speak to somebody like Rabbi Rebbe He didn't even speak to Rebbe Lazar. So he either, it was the story happened with Zairi. Zairi spoke to Rosh Lakish and he would speak to Rosh Lakish. Or the story never happened with Rosh Lakish. It was Zairi and Rebbe Lazar. But at the end of the day, the Gemara says that Rosh Lakish or Zairi, one of them said that it's because of the Bavliyim that didn't do an aliyah, so to speak, they didn't come to Eretz Yisrael, all of them together in the time of Ezra. That's why Kishbarchu took away Yishchina and reduced it to Abbaskal. And tomorrow we're going to see that Rabbi Yechonon argues, have a wonderful day.